Hello everybody, my name is Walter and today I want to show you how you can build my seamless retractable corner water elevator with direct and exclusive level selection. This is based on a previous design I showed you quite some time ago that now also completely hides away the magma and the soul sand block when not needed. But let's start at the beginning. So this is a multi-floor water elevator for up to 16 floors. Uh, for this tutorial I will go with just 6 floors. Uh, the interesting part for this is that the elevator is completely hidden away in the corner of the room when it's not needed. Except for the visible button panel here and also this and this waterlocked stairs block which are required for the entire thing to work properly. The rest is just pure decoration. And also a bit of an attempt to hide away the elevator. Anyway, how do you use it? It's rather simple. The wooden button represents the floor you are currently on, so you always know where you are. And the other buttons are the level selection. So let's say I want to go to floor number 5. All I need to do is press the button, wait a few seconds, and now I have a direct connection to floor number 5. So all I need to do is jump in here, and I can now jump out at floor number 5. I can't get out or well in at floor number four, which is where the exclusive level selection comes into play. So as you can see, floor number four is completely closed up. If I'm done with the entire thing, all I need to do is press the button for the current floor and the entire thing will reset and hide away. As you can see there, just wait a few seconds and there you go. So that's basically what I want to show you today. As a last side note here, when you get trapped inside of a water tube because you're on a multiplayer server and someone else pressed the button while you were traveling. Don't panic, just travel to the top of the water tube, reach through this little gap here and press the button and you will get straight to the bottommost floor. And that's already the entire emergency exit. And with that, let's talk about the sizes. So it's a modular design. Each module is just nine blocks high, but due to some issues, they can only be spaced every 10 blocks. The modules are nine blocks long, and the width depends a bit on the size of the button panel and subsequently on the number of floors. The minimum is 13 blocks, the maximum is 16 blocks. And with that out of the way, let's talk about the required resources. So if you want to build this, you're going to need for the bottom and the intermediate floors, building blocks. And then I'm using glass blocks here for the water chute. In addition, you're going to need 16 slabs, 19 stairs, the magma and the soul sand block, 88 redstone dust, 20 redstone torches, 28 repeaters, 10 comparators, 26 observers, then a single redstone block, 5 normal pistons, 25 sticky pistons, 10 node blocks. Depending on whether you run into a piston bug, you may want to use an additional node block. Then 3 dispensers, each with an empty bucket. 2 hoppers. 2 target blocks. Depending on the spacing, you may need an additional target block, especially if you go with the minimum spacing of 10 block height difference. Then 17 stone buttons, a single wooden button. Uh, those numbers obviously get reduced a bit uh, if you have less floors due to the simplified or reduced uh, button panel. Uh, then you're gonna need a composter and something to put, at least one layer in the composter. Then a couple of signs to mark your floors. And obviously some water. Then uh, for the topmost floor, since that is greatly reduced in complexity, you're gonna need just some building blocks, about two slabs, four stairs blocks, 38 redstone dust, five torches, five repeaters, eight comparators, six observers, four sticky pistons, three node blocks, two hoppers, 16 zone buttons, and a an wooden button. Additionally, if you have a height difference between two floors that is greater than 10 blocks, as you can see here, for every additional three blocks, you're going to need four observers, node blocks, and normal blocks. And for every four blocks additionally to the 10, you're going to need two torches and two normal blocks. This is needed for those signal line extensions you can see here. And with 
that, we have finally reached the end of this rather lengthy prologue. So let's finally get to building this elevator here. So let's start with building one module. For that, start by placing the basic infrastructure for the elevator itself. The reference point here is essentially this block here. This is the block in the corner of the room where the water tube will connect to the floors below and above. Right behind this block, place a magma block. This is, by the way, the side with the future button panel. And on the left, place a soul sand block. To the right and the front, place stairs blocks so that they will spill into this kind of area here. So uh, you can place them in three different directions. This way, this way, or this way here. They provide two functions. The first is that they make sure that no water will spill into the floor. And for the other, they will provide a water source inside of this area here, so the water bubble column can actually form. Then furthermore, place blocks below the future walls, so the water will not spill from the stairs blocks into the circuitry. And as you also can see, the first two blocks of the walls going out from the corner need to be left free before you start with the actual walls. The rest of the floor can be filled in with normal blocks and the entire seating can be filled in with normal blocks except for the space where the water column will be later on. Then below the entire thing you need a four high water tube with just a few modifications. First of all the two blocks below the marker block need to be left out so you have two high space here. The block directly below the source end block needs to be a full block. And on the opposing side, three blocks down, you have a stairs block right side up with the opening towards the back. All other blocks here can be pretty much any kind of block that well, doesn't interact with Redstone circuitry. Um, I'm using glass here so you can see a bit more, but you could use pretty much any kind of block. And that's the basic layout of the elevator done. Next, let's talk about the button panel. Now, before you can actually start with the button panel, you need to know how many floors your elevator will have. Once you know that number, it's time for the button panel. In my example here, I will work with six floors, which is the button panel down here, but I will start with how you can actually figure out the layout for your exact case. First of all, where is the button panel positioned? Well, if you go out from the corner with the elevator, four blocks out from that is where the button panel starts. The bottom row of the optional two rows will be right above the floor and the top row would be right below the three high ceiling. That's the general position of the entire thing. Now let's talk about the layout itself. So the maximum are two rows with eight buttons, so 16 in total, 15 for the floors above and below, and one to reset the current floor. Or, well, to reset all floors. The lowest numbered floor, which is the floor at the very bottom of the elevator, has its button on the top left corner. Then the floor number rises towards the right. Then it flips into the bottom row, rises further towards the left now, to the topmost floor at the bottom left. Essentially, those two rows are one row which is virtually connected at this side here on the right. If you have less than 16 floors, you need to remove buttons, but you need to make sure that you don't leave any gaps. So you can't remove, for example, just this button here, because this would be a virtual gap. If you want to remove an odd number of blocks, you will have to work on the left side here. So you can remove this button or maybe this button. If you need to remove more, you can, for example, remove this one and maybe then this one. So you don't need to be symmetrical either. Or if you want to remove first of all as, uh, two, you can start on the right side, but you need to do this symmetrical. So essentially you moving the connection of the two rows from this point to this point here. You can remove another two on this side, but that's it. As long as you have two rows, you need this connection to be at least six blocks from the start of the button panel. 
That's important. You can still remove buttons on the left. Also, you can be asymmetrical, as you can see here. If you don't need more than eight buttons, you can also just leave out the second, which uh, or the top row of the button panel, which I did down here. If you don't have a second row, you are not limited to this button here being at position number six. You can remove more. This is just uh, so that the connection between the two rows actually works. So now with the button panel laid out, it's time for the circuitry connecting the two rows. For that, we start at the start of the button panel, independent of whether there is actually a button. We need to go below that, two blocks down, and we place a full block. Then right to that, a hopper, followed by a row of normal blocks all the way to the end of the button panel, which should be right below the last pair of buttons, if you have two rows at least. Then we need redstone wire all the way on top of those rows. Next, we need to connect the top row. For that, we start with an upside down step at the leftmost position, followed by a row of blocks all the way over with some redstone dust on top. And then, where the two rows should be connected, we first place two blocks going up diagonally like so. Let's start on top of this one here, and in here, a comparator powering the bottom row, essentially. And now, if we click one of the buttons at the bottom, the line at the bottom is powered, and the same is true if we pull a press a button at the top, just with a little less power. If you have left out one or two pairs on the right side of the build, all that happens is that those two rows here are a bit shorter and this part here moves over. If you have left out buttons at the top row here, you can also remove the not needed wire at the back here and the blocks there on. You can't remove the block down here, independent of whether you actually have a button there or not. And uh, well, if you only have one row of buttons, which should be the bottom row, all that's needed is the bottom row part there. So let me quickly do this for this example here. So, and then the wire. And that's already the entire circuitry for a button panel with six buttons like this here. Now, since the rest of the circuitry is independent of the layout of the button panel, I will continue with my simplified button panel here. The next step is going from this hopper to the third block along this line. Now, if this line here is shorter due to you having, for example, just four buttons, you may have to extend this line. But nevertheless, from the third block in this line, go two blocks towards the back with redstone wire. Put a block right in front of that with a torch on top. A sticky piston on top, and then an observer on top powering towards the left of the build. Grab another few blocks, place two in a raised position here, and then one more raised further. Put two redstone wire and a torch on the blocks like so. Then place a block diagonally down behind the hopper. Grab an output from the hopper with a comparator. Then place another race block right next to the comparator, place another one on top of that, run this into a full block with another full block hovering below, that's on the top of those two blocks. Then place a row of three blocks in this direction, put two redstone wire there and a compared and subtract mode in this gap here with the comparator running into the side of it. Cut off the wire here with a full block, then place three blocks like this and a raised block here. Run a comparator into this raised block. Another comparator in the opposite direction next to that. Some redstone wire there. Torch on the outside of this block. With a sticky piston right next to that. And another observer powering towards the left on top. Running into a full block. Then place a block here with a comparator in a subtract mode. Getting this signal here from the side. Right behind the comparator, you can already place a node block and behind that node block, a hopper. Then let's continue with 
two more blocks and then a raised block. That's done via here, compared to there. Then on the back of the build, first we need two blocks and then next to the piston arm we need an upside down slab. Put redstone wire on the two blocks on the outside and then a comparator connecting and filling in this loop. Put one more redstone dust on top of this block, which you run into a full block. Then we need two blocks like this here, a repeat on four ticks and another repeat on two ticks like this. This repeater runs into a sticky piston with uh, which goes powers towards the back with another observer powering towards the left to the face. Now that the button panel is pretty much finished, it's time to program it so it actually knows what floor it represents. For that, uh, the first step is uh, actually replacing the button for the current floor with a lever and turn this on. This makes life a bit easier later on. Now if you look down here, you will see this compared to that turned on. And what we need to do is put items into this hopper here until this compared to here turns off. Now I already figured out how many I need to put in there, so four full stacks. Um, if you don't know, I would recommend going in quarter stacks because uh, each stack basically represents a single strength of three. And if you go in quarters, it's the simplest way to figure out the correct single strength. But you can see, once I have four full stacks in here, this turns off. And to be sure, if you press the button for the next higher floor, you should see in the comparator turn on again. That's what we want to see. Once you have that signal string figured out, you can replace this lever with a wooden button again. All other are stone buttons. Uh, you could theoretically use buttons, either stone or wood, for all of them, but uh, that way you can actually notice what is the current floor. So anyway, that's uh, this hopper done, and the same amount of items you placed just into this hopper, you need also to place in this hopper at the back there. And with that, the whole system is properly programmed. Now, at this point, I would greatly recommend adding the button panels to all of the future floors together with the programming part. Uh, this is especially a good idea for the topmost floor, since the rest of the circuitry greatly deviates when it comes to the top floor. Anyway, once you have done that, it's time for the circuitry for the normal floors and also the bottom floor. For that, I would first recommend placing an immovable block on top of the mark mark block, or you may have to replace that when it gets uh, displaced by some pistons. Furthermore, what I forgot to mention earlier, this block here, so two above the stairs block on the right side of the water tube, actually needs to be a transparent block. All the other blocks can be full blocks, but this here needs to be a transparent block, or the rest of the circuitry will not work properly. Anyway, let's continue. So let's go to the back of the build and behind the magma block, we need to go three blocks down. So at the bottom of the water tube extension we built earlier, there we need a block. Then add another two blocks to the left side and one to the front. And then in this gap and to the front here, an upside down slab. Put down a crisscross of redstone wire. Repeat on one tick in this direction, running into a full block with a torch to the side. Block behind it. Then we need a, a lower block here with what's on dust there and there, and a repeat on one tick in there. And then in front of this wire, we need a full block with a torch to the front, block on top, torch on top. Then, going from this redstone wire here, we need an upside down slab next to that. So, in this position here, with some redstone dust on top. In front of the redstone wire, we need a target block with a torch to the left and the front. In front of the repeater, place a block with redstone dust on top, which should connect to both torches. Then place a block here with a repeater on one tick running into a full block. 
with a block in this corner with some Ritzen dust on top. This is also the reason we need a full block in this position, because now we can place another block here and take an output with a repeater on two ticks, which we run into a full block, just like in this here. Then let's add another block down here with a repeat on three ticks running into a full block with redstone dust on top. Then a target block in between the two redstone wire which should connect nicely to both and a torch on top. Now grab another upside down slab and place it diagonally to this one here. Then we need to go one layer above and place it in this corner. Put Ritzen dust on top of those two and then cut it off in this corner here. Place another block in front of this wire and on top of this torch there with the torch to the front and the right. Block on top of the torch and in front of it. Then we take an output with a repeat on two ticks running into a full block. Then we can already start placing some Sticky pistons. For that, start with a sticky piston on top of this wire here, facing towards the water tube. Place another two sticky pistons on top. That can be a bit tricky to fill in, but should be doable. Then another sticky piston facing upwards here. And now um, we need a slab on top of that one. Now you have two options. You can go with an upside down slab, which would end up in this kind of configuration when it's closed, or this here, which would end up making a little water source in the corner. You could also use a stairs block, for example, to make this some kind of uh, outer edge of the room would also be an option. So um, let's actually make this a uh, fitting smooth slab. And yeah, I will go with this configuration. Yeah, that should look quite nicely. Good. Um, now that we have that done, it's time to fill in uh, another few blocks here. The first is a block in front of this wire with a torch towards the front, block on top. And this is now the point where you will notice if you haven't placed the transparent block here, uh, the um, immovable block. Uh, since otherwise you would have to now build this part there. Now some redstone dust on top. While we're here, let's actually grab a observer looking at this wire here. Then to the right of that wire, we need another full block with a torch to the back and a full block on top. And now let's grab another sticky piston and place it right behind the Soul sand block. With that, the circuitry for this part down here should be pretty much done. So let's test it. So the first thing to test is if we were to power this line down here. You should see this closing up. This is looking good so far. Now, if I were to power this line here, nothing happens until I also power this line here. Now you should see those uh, the soul sand block and if I depower this line here you should see the magma block. That's looking good and if I depower this again it should close up again and if I let's power this one here and now let's test if the override down here works and everything closes up. Okay this is looking good. Independent of yeah that's exactly what we want to see. That's perfectly what we want to see. Following that, let's go to this lonely block here. First, we need to go one layer down, then up, down and up, and one final down. And this gap plays a repeat on one tick, following here a redstone cross, and find a comparator there. Put a normal piston behind this block here with a composter hovering above this. In the composter, we need at least one layer. Can be more, but we need at least one. Put two blocks on top. Then on top of those blocks, we need a normal piston facing downwards. Now while we're here, let's place two blocks in front of the 
observer there, put Ritzen dust here, and a repeat on Vortex in this direction there. Then we need another two blocks next to that, with a repeat on two ticks running into this block, some Ritzen wire there. Then place a row of blocks all the way over to this point here, put Ritzen dust on top of those blocks. Then go around the corner, one down here, place Ritzen dust and a torch on the front of that block, which should connect to this wire down there. Then go up one layer around the corner. Here we need an upside down step so we don't cut off this wire. And another full block up here so we actually cut off wire connections here. Put Ritzen dust again. Then all the way over until we are almost next to this torch there. Oh, well, actually, until we are at this point. Then we go one layer down, one layer up, and one layer down again. Put Ritzen dust on top of those blocks. Then here we need a repeat on two ticks. Put a block on a full block on top of this one here. Then we need two more blocks here and one block on top of this torch. The Ritzen wire like so. Torch on top of this block. Block on top and to the side. Raise block here and then a repeat on two ticks in here. Then put Ritzen dust on top of those blocks. Now let's go quickly to this corner here. Here we need a torch on top, block on top and to the back. Again a repeater on two ticks running into a full block and some redstone dust on top. Then let's grab some sticky pistons and place them. We start next to the hopper here, then two more on top. And then a second layer to the front. And here we start pretty much in the same idea. You may have to get down a bit to place the bottom one and the third one on top. Again, double piston extenders like this here. And they should now be flush with the walls. Now let's go back to the circuitry again. First we need to actually raise this block here on top of the redstone cross. Don't forget to replace the redstone wire. Then place a block behind it with a repeat on three ticks taking output and running into a full block with some redstone dust on top. Then in this corner here we first place a block on top of the repeater there. Then following that from this piston arm here we need two upside down slabs. Redstone dust here and there and a repeat on three ticks running at the piston arm. Now we need an upside down slab ladder with two steps as you can see here and two more normal blocks over to the piston arm again three redstone wire and a repeater on three ticks like this grab a sticky piston place it on top of this redstone wire here facing towards the back of the build with an observer powering downwards Dying to that we need a full block then we go diagonally down twice and once up Let's some dust here. Repeat on three ticks there. Then a torch on the right side of the block with the repeat on top. Block on top. And to the front. And then another raised block here. Repeat on three ticks in this gap. Put two torches down like this. Then we need a Lowered block down here with some redstone dust on top. Cut off the wire here with a full block. Then a full block there. Lowered block here and a repeat on one tick taking an output running into this empty space for now. Block on top. Another block here with some redstone dust on top. Block there. And another repeat on one tick there. Then let's go add another block on top of this torch. Block here. Then a lowered block there. Two redstone wire, block here, so one layer down. Take an output from the block we just placed with a repeater on one tick. Now grab an observer, place it looking at the repeater we just placed. Then grab your dispensers and place them essentially in a column in front of the observer there. Now grab some more sticky pistons, place them next to this row or column of sticky pistons there. 
Then while we're here, let's actually place two, uh, another block here and follow that up with a um, slab. You could use pretty much any kind of transparent block there. Uh, this is just to avoid water splitch later on. Um, now that we have those blocks in there, it's time to get to the back here. First, we need a raised block right there with some redstone dust on top. Block on top of the redstone wire and next to that. Repeat on vortex running into this block with a block behind it. Redstone dust on top. Redstone block on top. Now those parts here should somewhat start to retract. Then we need our normal pistons. First on the right side of our build, so right side when you look for it, it from the front, we need two normal pistons as you can see here. And then on the opposing end with a one wide gap, just one piston like this with some uh, with a full block on top. Then let's go and add a block two above in this redstone wire here. So we can essentially when the uh, Redstone block is pushed over, take an output with a repeater on three ticks, which we run into a full block with a torch to the side of it, or the front of it. Then place a sticky piston on top of this slab here, which should now be powered in a diagonal connection with the torch there, and should also be flush with the wall more or less. Then let's go to this lonely normal piston there. We need next a uh, upside down slab right on top of that one with some redstone dust on top of that. Pop that with a full block and another full block to the right of our build. Another one to the side of that one, then we go down towards the front and down towards the right, and then up again, which should be right in front of the observer there. Put on for redstone wire like this. Then block here. We take an output with a repeat on one tick, run this into a full block, then a lower block towards the front. Redstone dust on top and a repeat on one tick again there. This runs into a full block with a lower block towards the back and the left. Another block towards the front here. On that one we need a button so we can redirect this wire. Then go down a layer with two blocks in those spaces here. Put down two redstone wire, another repeat on one tick there, and here. Now it's time for the bus lines. For that, let's actually go first down here and start next to this normal piston. Place a node block on the back of it, then observe on top, block on top, node block on top, and observer block and once more the same configuration until we reach with a final block on the back of this null piston there. And now we need to do the same just backwards. So we start again with a node block next to the null piston here, but this time the full block is on top. Then the observer, powering downwards this time. The node block we already placed, so we need another block. Then let's actually go up and place the node block for now. And block and observer. So that's the first two lines. Now for the second pair of lines, we start with a block behind this normal piston there. And then we need to go first up with four observers. Then below that we need another node block and a full block like in this here. And then another observer powering upwards. On top of this one here, we need a node block. Now we need a line in the opposite direction. So we start with an observer powering downwards, powering into a full block. 
with a node block and below it, then we need four observers downwards running into another full block with another node block below it. Now we are pretty much finished with the circuitry for this floor, so let's go to the front again. The next step is actually putting a bucket, an empty bucket in each of those dispensers here. Then grab your stairs. Start with three. On top of the magma block, uh, sorry, soul sand block, going sideways as you can see here. Similarly, we need those on top of the magma block. Then to smooth out the surface, let's add another column to each side. As you can see here, that is rather important. Now for the top, let's start with one stairs block here, another stairs block on top of the dispensers here. Then we rotate in this direction, add another one to this side, and rotate 180, add one to this side. So now you should have two stairs blocks, as you can see here, in the corner configuration. Then add another full block, or oh, well, any kind of block here to keep the water from spilling. And the same here. And that's pretty much all of the required uh, blocks. So let's start with water locking. Water lock this block, this block, and this block. Then go down here and water lock only the six blocks on the inside of the corner. Then well, let's actually plug this up to avoid water spillage for now. You can start filling in this column here. Make sure that you don't accidentally waterlock this block or you will have to rebuild parts. And then you can also waterlock this. And now if we grab a lever and where to power this line of wire here. Everything should close up. Okay, this is not looking very and that nice, so uh, you know what? I'll go with a system like this here. Yeah, that looks quite nice. And if I want, I could continue on with this uh, infinitely. So um, yeah, that might make for a rather interesting decoration for the room. Yeah, why not? Okay, so now this is finished. Now uh, the next step is obviously copying this to the other floors with the exception of the topmost floor. And once we have done that, I will quickly do the topmost floor and then I will talk you through how you can interconnect the different floors. But before that, there are actually a few more modifications we need to make. The first is the addition of an emergency exit. Add a block to the front of this node block here, then go down with two blocks, add redstone dust on top, add a button to the side of the second one, which should now be reachable from the inside there. Next, um, occasionally this piston here may not properly update and extend. Uh, for some reason now it's working, um, but if you find that you have that problem, just add a node block to the side of it and that should fix that issue. Then we need to go in here uh, first, remove the water from those blocks, and then replace this block here with a transparent block, because uh, if it gets powered and it's a full block, it will work or uh, will partially destroy the circuitry on the side here, so which is not uh, which is not nice. Then replace those stairs blocks again and water lock them again. Okay, that's this module, more or less adjusted, except for one last part. And that is, we still need to make sure that the area where the piston is actually gets waterlocked. For that, start with a stairs block in this position. And then flick off this lever here. Now you should be able to remove this block here. 
and replace it with another staircase. Uh, you could also replace this one if you don't want to do it with the back there. And then waterlock the one at the back, place the block here, and waterlock this one here. And now you should actually be able to get a full water column all the way through, which is uh, rather important actually. And another quick insert here. Um, once more, I forgot something, and that is actually the space where the piston arm extends into. That also needs to be re water uh, locked or whatever you want to call it. So um, we need to remove those two blocks here, replace them with stairs in this kind of configuration, and then place glass blocks on the sides of the stairs block at the back, look through this gap here, water lock the one at the back, then put another glass block here and then water lock in this one there. And if you do this for all other floors, now uh, you should actually have a water column from the very bottom to the very top. And with that said, it's now time to copy the other floors with the exception of the topmost floor. Um, due to another little bug I found, I had to increase the minimum distance between floors to 10. Just as a little side note here. And voila, so now I have five floors built up in total. And the topmost floor I will talk about in a few seconds. Uh, for now, let's quickly talk about the bottommost floor. Um, here you could theoretically remove a few things, but uh, you wouldn't really save that many resources. And if you leave it as a normal floor, it's easy to expand downwards. For example, if someone decides to, well, increase the world height downwards. So, um, yeah, I will not show you how to simplify this because it doesn't make too much sense in my opinion. Anyway, with that out of the way, uh, well, just make sure that you have a lever powering this line at the back here uh, so that the bottom is actually closed up or you will be left with this hole in the ground all the time. So just flick the lever here on and uh, that's it. Okay, with that out of the way, uh, let's talk about the topmost floor. So the topmost floor is much, much simpler than all of the other floors, uh, since you only, essentially only need to open and close this gap in the floor. So as you can see, I went with a similar setup to the other floors here, and all I need to do is essentially add a piston behind the wall with a stairs block being pushed in like this. Now, um, Actually, let's push it in like this here, um, because if I place another stairs block here, I will now have a flat surface there. So flat surface here, and uh, let's actually add another block there. So now this is closed properly, and now we can already fill in the rest of this wall segment there. So that's already pretty much done. Um, I will add uh, the rest of the circuitry now. So what's still missing is the connection or the signal lines uh, or the bus lines here at the back. So for that, let's start with a signal line going down from this one here. So first place a block in this corner. Then we need to go down with an observer block node block. Now if you place it at the minimum distance of 10 blocks in between floors, you should have a one high gap. That's just what we want for now. Then here, first remove this node block and then replace it with a one high gap above this observer there. Place a full block on top. That's the dust on top. Then we need a block on top and to the side. Now three blocks down like so. Put down three repeaters on two ticks each. Run them into, or put a block behind it. And now we simply need to connect it to this observer there. So block here, then we go down a layer. Then let's go all the way over here. And then from here on, let's go down a bit so we can spare a few minor resources. And and that's this connection pretty much done. Um, and 
the rest of the connections I will do in a moment. But for now, let me quickly add all of the missing water tubes in between the floors. Okay, so now that we have the physical connection, it's time for the signal lines. Um, here, basically, you have two different types of signal lines. The first is a torch tower that connects this lonely torch that also closes up the top of the water tubes or the floors with where we have currently those levers here. This is the override line that forcefully opens the top of a floor. And then we have the four bus lines, which are those two columns here, and this column and this column here. And here, for the extension or connection of those two uh, four bus lines, it is important that all bus lines have the same delay that you add to them. That's the most important part. If the distance is a multitude of three blocks, all you need to do is add those three block segments. So essentially, block gets powered, triggers the node block, triggers the tri uh, observer, triggers the next full block, and so on and so on. Can go in either direction. Uh, if you need a two high segment, you go basically with uh, just leaving out the full block. And if you need a one segment, well, it's just an observer to be added. Just make sure that you don't get feedback from one signal line into the other. The only place where that can really happen is where those two signal lines are right next to each other. Uh, this is essentially if you have a node block being powered and powering the node block of the other one. Um, if you want to avoid that issue, one possibility is replacing the node blocks with, for example, um, fence gates or, well, hoppers or similar. Anyway, let me quickly walk you through how to connect the signal lines. For that, I will start with the simplest one, which is the topmost one. For that, uh, let's start with the override. Here, essentially, when this torch is powered, we want the piston up there also to be powered. And that's already it. So as you can see, everything is done. Um, oh, just noticed I completely forgot to add the uh, override here. Did I place this at the wrong height? Yep, I placed it at the wrong height. No real issue. Let's quickly correct it. Just make sure that you don't accidentally spill water all over the place. Um, that would really be a bad uh, idea. So anyway, with that little hiccup fixed, let's continue on. So we have the override line now added. Now it's time for the bus lines. So here we need to add one higher segment. And here is exactly the same going on. So no issue there. Um, here it's the same, one and one. Here it's still just one. Just make sure that you add the observers in the di uh, correct direction or you will get a clock running. Um, here you have to get a bit creative. Uh, if you have a situation like here, you actually need to move that node block down and then an observer on top. Yeah, that should do the trick. I hope. Uh, anyway, um, let's go down a bit further. So here we have to do the same. Notebook down, observer on top, and the rest just gets some observers added to the mix. Always make sure that you add them in the correct direction. Because you might have to fix stuff if you don't. So that's those parts done. And now for the slightly more interesting part, well, let's actually reset those. Yeah, I will have to reset that. The appears somehow I broke that part a bit. 
So those are no longer waterlogged and the buckets have been displaced. For that, the fix is pretty simple. And don't forget the water lock. And now that's working again. Now, last part is adding the connections between those further apart floors. And here I'm basically going with this pattern here. So, node block, observer, full block. And here the same, just in a reverse direction. Uh, node block, full block, observer. And here it's not block and then those and then just in the correct direction and those. And now I'm just repeating this pattern a few more times. And voila. Fortunately it lined up perfectly so I didn't have to work with any of those intermediate steps. Uh, now that we have the four bus lines done, it's time for the interconnections of the overrides between the floors uh, that are not the topmost floors. So um, I already did this for the floors at the top and the bottommost floors, but I still need to do it for the floors two, three, and four. So uh, anyway, uh, for this setup again, similar to before, we need to connect this torch with this line here and we need to make sure that when we do that this torch here will also get or will not be disconnected from this wire so let me quickly do this so the only real way we can do this here is placing a block on top that's on dust on top and now we need to redirect this wire here which is done by replacing this block with a target block and that's this connection already done. I did the same in those places there. And now the last part is connecting this torch via a long torch tower. To the very same signal line over here. Uh, here we have a similar situation, but due to the fact that there is no circuitry around, we can do without a target block. And now would be a good time to actually make a world backup, if you can, um, because I didn't and promptly had a major water spillage, which cost me about half an hour to get back to this point here. So um, yeah, make a world backup if you can before actually testing it out. Testing itself is pretty straightforward. Just press all the buttons and check whether everything works out. Maybe you want to avoid uh, spamming the buttons. Um, there might be some uh, timing issues involved. Uh, I'm not sure why I had this village going on earlier. Uh, anyway, now the entire system appears to work, uh, which means it's finally time to finish up the floors and make them look a bit more well finished. And voila. So as you can see, now I have finished up all of my six floors. They look pretty much the same, except for the location of the wooden button, which is just as it's supposed to look like. And well, with that, we have finally reached the end of this tutorial for my seamless, retractable corner water elevator with direct and exclusive level selection. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and well, see ya.